Hello again, everybody. It's Scott Casper, Takedown Wrestling Media. Our coverage of the sport continues. We land this week with the Cyclones of Iowa State, the head men there, Coach Kevin Jackson. KJ, how are you? I'm great. I'm great, Scott. Glad to be in the Nike hot seat. The Nike hot seat it is, my friend. I know that you and Nike have been in conversations deep and uh, detailed. How is that going? It, it's It's been great. You know, we've been Nike head to toe for, for a while. Now they've really stepped up and um, they have um, uh, some people really taking on um, of their brand and um, Nike wrestling has just gotten stronger and stronger and, and we're looking for a continued relationship and even for it to grow stronger. So we're excited. Uh, Nike has been good to us and um, we're looking forward to uh, even extending our, um, our relationship with them. Are you wearing Nike gear today, coach? I got to ask. Nike gear, Nike, Nike wrestling right That's there. What we're talking about. Yep, it's yep. right there. APS yep. athlete performance solutions, Eddie Brown, of course, Grant Turner, Shane, and all the good folks there at Nike uh, are coming in and wanting to make a difference, and that's evident. Um, well, great guys. I mean, just 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 great guys um, that love wrestling. Um, they've gotten real wrestling people um, uh, working with them. Uh, you know, Eddie's an uh, uh, outstanding man. Um, had an opportunity to spend some time with him at the World Championships, um, you know, in the box, and, and just... Uh, uh, loves wrestling, loves to promote wrestling, wants to see wrestling grow, and it's exciting to see Nike really take that step uh, moving forward. Amen, and hopefully they can be the harbinger of other good things to come, perhaps Fresno State, perhaps Oregon. Uh, they have a greater design on what they want to see their impact be uh, across the country, and I think uh, uh, they've got every opportunity and, again, all the interest in the world to see wrestling continue its growth. We're talking with Coach Kevin Jackson, the head man at Ames, Iowa, the home of the Cyclones of Iowa State. It's where Earl Hall lives, Leland Weatherspoon, Gabe Marino, Tanner Weatherman, Dante Rodriguez, Johnny Meeks, just to name a few. What's important about this year, it's, it's a, a year of evolution, if you will. The Big 12s have now more teams in the Big 12, more akin to its name, and its championships will be wrestled in Kansas City. Before we get there, before we have that conversation, let's talk about the season as it begins, Coach. This is a year. It's an opportunity for you guys. You have a tremendous schedule. What are your thoughts on the overall schedule and how you start? Well, I, I like the way you put it right away. I mean, I think um, saying it's, a, it's an evolution. It's the evolution uh, of our program, evolution of, uh, of our athletes, um, and evolution of performance. Uh, that we're that we're looking for here at Iowa State. I think we have a great group of guys um, that are putting in the work. I mean, I, I haven't had a group work harder uh, than this group of young men. Uh, I think we have a great mix of uh, of veterans and and of youth. Um, and I'm not, and I can tell you that some of these youth are leading the way. So um, so I like what you said as far as the evolution um, of wrestling. Uh, that's the way we're looking at it. Uh, we need to take that next step. Um, I thought we were really close last year. Uh, had a disappointing NCAA tournament with the exception of Kyvin Gatson. Uh, but at the same time, throughout the year, we shown uh, we showed that uh, our guys are capable um, and the majority have returned uh, to take that next step in our, uh, in our development and our evolution of, of Iowa State wrestling. You brought up Kyvin uh, Gatson. He's uh, said he's ready. Willing and able. Last we knew, he'd hung up his shoes. He came <laughs> down to the studio, got Did we watch. believe it, though, Eddie? Did we believe he really hung up his shoes when he said it? I didn't, but then again, I gave <laughs> him his watch. I mean, you do a gold watch for a guy who's done a, a you know great career, so I, I, I could have held on to the watch for another couple of years if I knew he's going to go after an Olympic berth. But uh, he will indeed challenge for uh, an opportunity to represent the United States. What are your thoughts on Kevin Gadsden making an Olympic run? Well, you know, he's going to have his hand full. I mean, uh, this kid, uh, Kyle Snyder, is the real deal. And I, I say it over and over again. I say it to our athletes that um, um, what I like about him is he didn't let any losses affect his confidence in himself. Actually, his confidence only grew and he got stronger. Kyvin beat him twice last year. He lost in the Big Ten Championships uh, to the Penn State kid. He lost to the Iowa kid in a dual meet. Uh, did not affect his belief in himself at all. And that's, you know, confidence is, is, is one of the key components to, to success. And so to see this kid uh, stay focused and win a world title um, was, was amazing. And it, and it says a lot about who he is. With that being said, you know, Kyvin did beat him twice. Uh, Kyvin hasn't given up a takedown to Kyle. Um, I know it's a different, a different sport. 
or a different different rules, but at the same time, a takedown's a takedown. Um, uh, throwing a guy to his back is throwing a guy to, to his back. Um, you know, the part tear is a, is a part Kyvin has to clean up. So I think he'll be right there in the mix. We actually have two Cyclones that um, are going to be after that Buckeye with Jake Varner and and, and Kyvin. So I'm, I'm praying on a, on a Cyclone making the team. But, you know, uh, Snyder's the real deal. He's a world champion. Uh, but Kyvin is training as hard as he trained, uh, maybe harder, um, at this Olympic run than he did for his NCAA championship run. He trained like a monster. Uh, for that NTA championship run. So I think his chances are outstanding. We'll find out right away if he can adapt to the freestyle um, uh, style of wrestling um, uh, at, at the NYAC um, in December. We're talking, with Kevin, in we're talking with Kevin Jackson. Uh, we'll get the date straight, that's for sure. But uh, you guys can kick it off on the road this year, or am I wrong? Am I reading the schedule correct? No, you're right. You're Vir right. Is it Virginia Tech? Yeah, and they're strong. I mean, we uh, even in our toughest years when we were struggling really, really bad, um, we managed to somehow find ways to beat Virginia Tech. I don't know how we did it sometime, but we found ways. And when they had some really, really good teams, they came in here highly ranked last year, and and we had a good performance against them, and we defeated them in the dual meet uh, last year here in uh, here in Ames. So I know they're down there in uh, Blacksburg, uh, uh, waiting in the weeds for us, and um, definitely um, um, are eager to get some revenge. Uh, against our program and our athletes. And so we know it's going to be a challenge right off the bat. Um, they got three highly ranked kids. I think they have probably more than that, but three returning All-Americans. Um, but they're a, they're a very, very good team that um, um, uh, Dresser has done a great job uh, building that program. And so it's going to be uh, hot and fast and uh, exciting uh, right off the bat for our program and, and throughout the year. We're talking with Kevin Jackson. Kevin, let's talk a bit about the Cyclone Open. Uh, we're not exactly sure who all the competitors are, but uh, there will be that cast of uh, what we call normalcy. You're going to see some guys from Iowa, uh, perhaps the entire UNI team. Who are some of the others that may be making that trip to the Cyclone Open? Well, I know um, Missouri brought their whole team last year, and um, you know Minnesota has sent their whole team. Um, uh, Wisconsin sent their starters last year. Um, you know, it, you know, in the state of Iowa, we have so many wrestling programs that the very best uh, from whether it's Iowa Central or Grandview or uh, some of these other um, um, uh, uh, smaller division schools will send their very best. So it makes it a very uh, a strong uh, a tournament. You know, St. Cloud National Champions um, will send their best uh, to, to, to Iowa State. But, you know, historically, you know, we get a nice mix of, of D1 um, and, um, and Division II. Uh, and then the high schools to the tournament, uh, which makes it a very, very quality tournament. You're, you're probably guaranteed uh, three to four uh, Division One matches um, at the Cyclone Open. Mm, and that's what it's about, quality matchups. I uh, remember many, many times we saw Jordan Burroughs come over from Nebraska, and uh, we just watched him grow and grow and grow because of events like this. He, he just absolutely was blossoming uh, yeah. as uh, his got a lot of poise from events like this. Boise, you're going to be wrestling Boise State this year. The Hawkeyes come to town. What are your thoughts? Well, I, I think that uh, Boise is going to be a lot better than they were last year. Um, they had some individual performances, but um, but they're only getting better. Um, obviously, the Hawkeyes are the Hawkeyes. You know, I think they're, you know, since I've been here, I think they've been consistently ranked one to, one to three. I don't know if they've dropped below three, um, especially in the final uh, finish at the, at the NCAA tournament. So, um, we know what they're bringing to the table. We know the style of wrestling that they bring to the table. We know where we're going to have to be at um, to compete and win matches uh, against them. I, I like our matchups. Uh, where we're strong, they're strong. Um, you know, they uh, uh, are a very capable team. Um, we know they're going to come and compete. Uh, there's no doubt about that. Uh, having it at home in, in Ames, uh, we're looking to get that home mat advantage and really fill the stadium up or fill the uh, Hilton Coliseum up. Um, to get that home field advantage and get our fans behind us. But but we're excited. I mean, we're excited about uh, having that opportunity to uh, to wrestle, you know, the best teams in the country, not only, um, you know, in, in November, but uh, throughout the year. Uh, we're going to we're going to we've stepped up with a very, very strong schedule. We have a strong schedule all the time, every year. Uh, but I think this year is, is specifically strong um, because we want to be really ready. Uh, for the Big 12 championships and the NCAA championships. Talk about wrestling the best in order to beat the best. You got to be the man. Be to be the man, you got to beat the man. Ric Flair may have said it, but the truth lies. 
really in the words that he said. They are. Very I always believe that. True. I, 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 I always believe that to be the man, you have to beat the man. You know, when I came through uh, as a world team member, as an Olympic athlete, you know, and, and you watch the Kenny Mondays and the Dave Schultz and the Nate Cars and, and Lee Kemp's, um, that world champion never stepped down until he was beat down. And that's the system I came under. Um, no one ever walked away from the sport when they were number one sitting on top of the ladder. And so I, I believe um, in that, that you got to be the man, you got to beat the man, and, and, you, and you never avoid the man. You go yeah. get him. You ever just want to add a woo right on the end of it? Right oh, you know I like Ric Flair, man. You know, I grew <laughs> up on um, the WWF. People might not remember the WWF. I do. Yeah. Yeah, WWF, WCW, Mid South, you bet. Oh, yeah. Briscoe oh, yeah. Country. You know what I'm saying? Junkyard dog, all of them. I know them. That's what I'm talking know them about. All. all right. Uh, so you returned to the Midlands this year and not the Southern Scuffle. What are your thoughts on the return to the Midlands? First of all, I mean, the Scuffle was an outstanding tournament. It really gave us an opportunity to see some teams that we normally don't see um, in an environment that we, they, we haven't been in, in in a long time down the Chattanooga, Tennessee, uh, they've really turned uh, that program around and really built a, a strong program and, and con consistent uh, uh, championship performance in their conference. Um, but going back to the Midlands, it's, it's um, you know, it's a little bit close to home. Um, they've really extended their arms to get not only Iowa State back, but to get, you know, a lot of the power teams or the, um, the, the um, um, historically strong uh, programs back into the Midlands. I think they've done some things. Um, you know, in the gym to make sure that it's a safe environment. Um, it's it's uh, historically it's it's been the best tournament in the country. It looks like it's heading that way again this year. Um, we're excited. I think our fans are happy that we're that they only have to drive a few hours up to Chicago now, as opposed to Evanston, uh, as opposed to uh, flying all the way down to Chattanooga. And so, um, for several reasons, we decided to go back to back to the Midlands. Um, but the number one is is great competition. Great competition indeed, and you'll see many of the schools uh, that you're competing against. Iowa, of course, uh, and then uh, I believe I believe uh, Mac Powerhouse Central Michigan uh, has been there many years before. Not sure if they're on the schedule again this year, but you will see Central Michigan and head coach Tom Borelli. Yeah, yeah, they're they're on our schedule. I mean, we've we've uh, you know I've I've tried to get my team back to Michigan because it's my home state. I have a couple of guys on the team from Michigan. Um, you know, we've been there every other year um, uh, and we've always wrestled central. They've always been hospitable to us. And I think this might be the first year that they're coming to Ames um, since I've been here. So uh, he redshirted quite a few kids. Um, you know, we had we had a, a really good, strong dual meet against him last year. But uh, I know what he's trying to build when you don't have um, uh, when you don't believe you have the all the horses in place. You redshirt your best guys so you can. You can put together a much stronger team and build for that next year. And I think that's what he's done. Um, so we're not sleeping on, uh, on Central, um, but they are um, in our in, they, they are, you know, projected um, uh, further down the road. And we're not really, really focused on them. But but obviously, when they come to town, it's going to be a challenge as well as, you know, the majority of our, our competitions. Let's talk a little bit about family. One of the things I've noticed is that perhaps more this year, preseason anyway, uh, if it seems like a happy place to be, the wrestling room seems like a family. The guys are getting along exceedingly well. Can you talk about that? Well, you know, I think that's what we've always tried to build. I mean, we're we're, we're not only trying to build, um, you know, a strong wrestler, strong program, but so we're trying to, you know, produce men of character. I think we've we've done a good job. My assistant coaches have done great jobs in selecting um, the recruits that come into Iowa State, and and, and they bond immediately. Um, you know, we do. Uh, um, uh, you know, team meetings all the time with with team bonding, um, uh, with the team bonding as 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 a topic. Um, you know, we continually try to get stronger. We're going to be better um, if we're all in the same page, if we're all pushing in the same direction, and if we're all wrestling for each other. Where we know that we're trying to get bonus points. If you're in a tough situation. Um, you got to continue to fight through that whole match, but you're you're competing for yourself, number one. But you're competing for the brand. You're competing for that I State logo. You're competing for your for your teammates, for your brothers. And um, and and one of the keys to to, to having um, that family atmosphere is for the guys to have fun. We, we grind. I mean, it, it's it's a grind every single day. Um, we're on the mat, on the track, in the stadium. Um, but there's got to be some 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 fun in there. You know, every, as long as I wrestled, uh, it was always fun. 
and, and I always enjoyed it. You know, it, it's tough after practice. You, the fun is how hard you went and the challenges that got put before you that you grinded through. And so our guys are ha having fun um, in that respect. But, but you know, we'll play games. I mean, we'll, we'll do the run and gun before practice. As we get into the season, we worry a little bit about injuries. But, um, but I think that brotherhood and being around their brothers makes it, makes it fun. And so we're going to have to continue to, um, to, try to, to try to create that. All right, let's switch to baseball, Coach. The Chicago Cubs defeated the St. Louis Cardinals. Then the Mets yeah. defeated the Chicago Cubs, ending what looked to have been a, one of the best seasons in the history of the sport. What were your thoughts the other night when the Mets go 4-0 and oh on the Cubs? A little disappointed, you know, a little, little, little disappointed, especially with um, Back to the Future. You know, in Back to the Future, I think in 2015, they predicted the – the Cubs to win um, the world the World Series, and so I would have loved for that scenario to work out for the Cubs to to um, to win that thing, or at least get to the championship. Because I just think that that just is that would create more interest, more people would just watch because the Cubs haven't been there in so long. But uh, but I was impressed with the Mets and also the season the Cubs had. I mean, you know, I think they got that manager late, um, you know, late to camp. Um, as far as the other teams, uh, you know, are concerned. Um, but for them to make the run that they made this year was was truly good for baseball and, and good for sports. Now, well, if uh, if I if I were to tell you that Ric Flair was coming to Des Moines in January for a particular game of basketball, would you make the drive from Ames to Des Moines for a personal meet and greet with the great one? Rick for Flair? sure, for, for sure. I um, you know I you know I know Ric Flair. Um, uh, while I've watched Ric Flair for a while, but I know that he's a big time wrestling. Uh, supporter, I know his son uh, wrestled, um, um, amateur wrestled, um, and I know that he loves the pure sport of of, of wrestling. And without a doubt, uh, I'd make it down. Uh, not only to see Rick, but to, you know to see my friends uh, like yourself and, and others uh, in the studio um, or at the event um, um, that are down in Des Moines. So I definitely would make it down there um, to say hi. Did you know Rick was a state champ in Wisconsin? I did know that. I did know that. <laughs> He's always very proud of that when he talks to me. He's always very proud yeah. of his state championship. Listen, it's always good to talk to you. Uh, final notes uh, have to do with um, the movie Foxcatcher. <clears throat> so many of us in the, in the wrestling world were a part of it. Kevin Jackson, on the other hand, was not in it, uh, was not referred to in it. Bennett Miller had some revisionist history going on, even as he edited the <laughs> film. Um, 30 for 30, ESPN's Prince of Pennsylvania, I think, did a good job of exposing some of the inaccuracies of the movie. Are we making more out of it than we should? Or did they do wrestling, the sport, and its people an injustice in telling the story at all? Well, I, I think 30 for 30 did a much better job of in the movie. Um, obviously the movie is Hollywood and they, they kind of crossed two timelines with when Dave was killed with when Mark was out there. Um, you know, I started wrestling at Foxcatcher in 1990, uh, through 95 and, um, uh, Mark was never out there because he had already left at that time. But the person watching, sitting in the theater, watching that video, they would assume that as soon as Mark walked off the farm, that DuPont rolled down there and, 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 and killed Dave. Um, but there were several inaccuracies uh, in the movie. Um, you know, several of us that uh, were with Dave during those final days or through those years from, you know, from 90s through the 95 prior to him being killed um, were not portrayed at all. I think they missed several opportunities to, to portray someone like a Kenny Monday. Him and Dave had a great robbery, but I know they're wrapping up a movie in two hours. And so it's probably hard to squeeze everything into that. But it was just disappointing to see that there was no minority representation in the movie. Uh, obviously, the, the 30 for 30 documentary um, did a much better job. Uh, I think that Nancy Schultz's documentary that's going to come out, I think it's coming out on Netflix, will um, share my perspective of my experience um, at Foxcatcher. There were several things that, that went on um, that have gone unsaid, whether it's 30 for 30 or whether it's the movie that gave all indications um, that our governing body should have stepped in and protected athletes and even represented athletes like myself, several other minorities that were put in a very difficult situation um, that was never addressed um, and never recognized and never dealt with. And so I think Nancy, I'm hoping that, I haven't seen the final product, 
uh, but I know I did several interviews uh, with um, um, with um, I forget his name off the top of my head. Um, he's, he did the Smashing Machine and several other um, um, documentaries. He did the uh, Mark Kerr story. You're yeah, talking yeah. about Green Hall. Yeah. Uh, so I'm, I'm I'm pretty confident that um, um, that she's gonna uh, show that in 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 her um, documentary, which probably is going to be as accurate as, as anything from her uh, point of view and from probably the same the same players you've seen in that thirty for thirty um, of the other night. It's interesting that ESPN was requested by Nancy Schultz to not show the documentary prior to. Uh, and, and let me rephrase, to not show the 3030 prior to the release of the documentary she spent, uh, you know, these many years making, and that'll be coming out on Netflix. So it's interesting that they did not listen to her and went ahead and released it anyway. Uh, kind of well, kind of disappointing in that regard. Well, you know, there's some, there's some politics behind it all. There's some, you know, there's some dollars and cents uh, uh, that they're looking at that we're not looking at or paying attention to. So... Um, you know, you, if anybody knows, um, the ins and outs of the, of, uh, the entertainment business and, and TV and sports marketing and everything else, it, it's you, Scott. So you probably got a little more insight even than I. Well, you know, speaking of sports and sports marketing, are you surprised that ESPN U will be showing the 50th anniversary edition of the NWCA All-Star Classic live from Atlanta, Georgia? I, I'm not surprised at all. I mean, based on what we've done. With the NCAA tournament, um, with the NCAA tournament, I'm, I'm not surprised at all because you're going to have the best wrestlers in the country from a ranking standpoint. Um, wrestling in a dual meet, which you have a timeline uh, for a dual meet, you know, a couple hours that they're going to be able to plug in. Um, I'm not surprised because you see the viewers that we get for wrestling. Um, you see the interest in wrestling around the country and around the world now. I think MMA has a little bit to do with that. Um that there are people that are willing to pay and see um, uh, our guys compete. And as long as we, uh, as a um, uh, uh, as a wrestling family, can package it the right way, and I know ESPN can package it the right way to make it even more entertaining, we should be on TV. We should be on TV even more. I'm, I'm actually, I was actually shocked and surprised that the World Championships was on, could only be viewed uh, online as opposed to. Um, it, you know, it, it was a, it was a later broadcast. I know ESPN showed a later broadcast, but you know the results were already done a couple of weeks prior to the prior to that competition being shown. But you know, our events are are fantastic events, especially when you're looking at a world event um, and you got two of our Americans in there. I mean, there's no reason why we couldn't have that thing on live. Um, but that's just that's just me, um, you know, probably venting a little bit. <laughs> you know, but that's why we have these conversations. I'm gonna ask. Uh, Kevin Jackson, hard questions. He's going to give me honest answers. Always has. And that's why he's the head coach at Iowa State. Kevin, thank you for the time today. I look forward to uh, continuing our conversations wherever we are together. It's always fun, but uh, appreciate the honesty. My best to your your uh, coaching staff and your squad. A uh, fine group of people there. Fine group of people indeed. Thanks a lot, Scott. I really appreciate you covering Iowa State. Go Cyclones. And you know, the Nike hot seat, not entirely uncomfortable. It wasn't that hot. I know it's going to get hotter, Scott. I know it's going to get hotter, and you might have <laughs> taken it easy on me. I, I'm not sure how many times you've used the Nike hot seat, but uh, but uh, but uh, I, I know you well enough that um, you, you might have held back on me a little bit, but I, but I appreciate it. <laughs> You're welcome, buddy. I'm Scott Casper for Takedown. He's Kevin Jackson for the Cyclones of Iowa State. And we appreciate you watching this Nike Hot Seat Edition with the head man himself, Kevin Jackson.